house of the Lord. Yes. Amen. Hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving and spent time with family. Yes. I'm going to open this up today, read a scripture, and give a word of prayer. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. It says, In everything, give thanks. Yes. Amen. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I was talking to a friend of mine the other day, and he said, I just wish God would send me an email and tell me what his will is for me. <laughs> well, I got news for you. We got, whole book. We got mail. Yeah. And his word says, in everything, give thanks. Because right. Thanksgiving is not a certain time of the year. Thanksgiving is not right. a seasonal thing. But Thanksgiving is every single day that God yeah. has given us. Because his mercy is new every morning. And every morning right. when we wake up, we have breath. And that is a gift from God. And we need to thank him every day and be thankful unto him for his mercy Amen. Yes. thankful unto him for his love for he supplies all our needs yeah. and he alone gives us every good and perfect gift Amen. and we need to thank him today I don't know about you but I came here to worship him I came here today to show my appreciation to him the Bible says in everything give thanks Lord we thank you for this day we thank you for your mercy Lord we thank you for the time that you give us to spend with our families Lord we thank you for the wonderful meals that we eat we thank you for the breath that's in our lungs Lord we thank you for the love that's in our hearts Lord we thank you for the Holy Ghost we thank you for the opportunity to come together this morning and worship you in spirit and in truth Lord we thank you for everything that you've done for us. We thank you for your precious blood that washed away every sin. Lord, we thank you for your mercy. Lord, we came here today to worship you. We ask for your blessing upon this service today in Jesus' name.
uh, works. And so uh, it's a very, and a lot of it stays in our section. Amen. We, I mean, we're, we're starting, uh, we, we have uh, started doing something in Holland. Amen. And uh, wanting the Lord to expand that and to move in that direction. Amen. And uh, we just want to reach all of our communities. Yeah. Amen. Holland's just going to be the start. And then, you know, we want to go to Little River Academy, Rogers, Troy, all over, and just Amen. kind of reach our communities for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. But Christmas for Christ, that is a, a great offering to give towards. So if you would desire to give, there's some envelopes in the back of the church in the foyer, um, and they all have like a dollar amount on it. And the idea is that you take whatever dollar amount that you want to give, put that amount in that envelope on on the particular envelope with that dollar amount and then just give that an offering and that will go towards Christmas for Christ. Amen. Praise God. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you God for your goodness today. Lord, we ask you to bless this tithe and this offering as it is given unto you. Let it go to the furtherance of your kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I was reminded after the fact um, with the hustle and the bustle of uh, Thanksgiving, um, we forgot to do all night prayer this past Friday. Amen. So I, I, I hope that you have spent some time praying and you continue to do so before the end of the month. Let's just spend some time in prayer. Uh, we are planning on having a revival at the very first week of January. And it's going to be a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And uh, our desire is to open up the year, the first through uh, the fourth or whatever, uh, with prayer and fasting. And, you know, we want to focus prayer. I want the Lord to do something great. I want to start off this next year great. I want to end this year great. But I want to start off this next year uh, with people receiving from the Lord. Amen. 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 I'm, I'm not just satisfied with just coming and going through motions. Amen. I desire to see the Lord move in your life, in your family's life. I desire to see great changes and things happen in your life. Amen. Praise God. So be praying with us about revival that first week of January. Uh, Sister Emily, do you have any more announcements? Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Um, real quick, in conjunction with the Christmas for Christ offering, um, our Sunday school department is um, doing kind of like a little competition with the fundraiser. Whichever Sunday school kiddo raises the most by December 17th, so you've only got a few weeks left, um, you are going to be taken out for some ice cream. So hopefully that'll um, help with your motivation. Um, and then this coming Friday, December the 1st, is the Section 4 Youth and Hyphen Christmas Banquet for ages 12 and up. It's from 7 to 9 p.m. at the Browns Church in Colleen. There is a $15 entrance fee at the door. Um, and then this Saturday, December 2nd, is First Prayer at 7 p.m. And then Saturday, December 9th, is the Ballora Youth Outing at 6 p.m. We're going to go look at some Christmas lights. That's always fun. It's one of my favorite things to do. And then Sunday, December 10th, is our ladies' Christmas gathering. Um, Sister Danielle has kindly opened up her apartment to host it. Um, it will be at 6 p.m. And ladies, I will be sending more details um, about that, possibly this evening or tomorrow. So be looking for that on your phones and then Saturday December 16th this was a little extra thing added but um, we have a few hyphen aged um, young adults and we're going to have a little hyphen uh, Christmas get together on that Saturday at 6 p.m. and then Sunday December 17th will be our Christmas service that will also excuse me I'm trying not to sneeze my allergies are giving me fits and that will also be our Sunday school uh, Christmas party that morning. And then um, Sunday, December 24th, will be our Christmas Eve service. 
Um, it will start at 11 a.m. There will be no Sunday school that morning, and we do have a guest speaker. So we will be having service that Christmas morning, Christmas Eve morning, sorry. Amen. Uh, someone once asked me, they said, why would you have church on Christmas? I said, well, you know, Christmas is supposed to be about Jesus anyhow, you know? It's about the birth of Jesus, you know? And so what better way to come and celebrate his birth and celebrate this time of year and keep him at the first and the foremost of our thoughts, yes. amen, during this time. Amen. Amen. Well, yesterday was a very important day for me and, uh, and, and you guys might not realize that it was a very important day uh, and uh, it was Sister Emily's birthday Amen. yesterday Woo! amen we are very thankful for Sister Emily I am very thankful I, I, if all of you knew me before <laughs> B.E. before Emily. <laughs> Amen. I was I was surviving off of 7-Eleven chili dogs and hot Cheetos <laughs> with the guys. And, uh, and uh, you know, my life has changed dramatically because of this lady. And, and uh, this church has benefited from her. Many talents and many abilities. A lot of things that you don't see up front. A lot of things are behind the scenes. You never see. I mean, we stay stocked with toilet paper. We stay stocked with paper towels. We stay stocked with everything. I mean, she's always making lists. She loves lists. She's always making a list. And checking them twice. And uh, she's always, but she, you know, back, back whenever I was, me and Leonard just handling everything. I mean, we're a bunch of fellas, you know. We can survive, you know. We didn't have certain things, but Emily makes sure that we don't run out. And she she does a lot of work behind the scenes. We love her very much, and we're thankful for her. And so the church got her a little birthday card. Just wanted to honor her today and uh, thank her for being Sister Emily. Amen. Amen. Well, thank y'all very much. Um, I got to enjoy my birthday yesterday with my mom. She and I went out together. We don't get to do that very, uh, very much anymore. But um, I appreciate your thoughtfulness and your kindness. And um, I love doing for y'all. Um, man, I'm trying not to get emotional up here. Um, I love serving the kingdom, and I, it's a privilege to serve each and every one of you. And um, thank you so much. All right. Well, we don't, I don't want you to get too carnally minded this morning, but after church, we got some cake next door. If you would like to stop by and enjoy some carrot cake, uh, we got some. That's her favorite, she said. So I hope it is. <laughs> that's what she told me. And, and anyway, so well, we got some cake next door. We want everybody to stay and grab a piece and enjoy. Amen. Let's, let's worship the Lord this morning. Amen. He is worthy of the praise. Hallelujah.
before I get into the word, I felt like I needed to do something. I wanted to do something. And I put them on the spot. And I, I asked Brother and Sister Torres if they would sing a song this morning. Amen. Amen. Would y'all mind coming and singing a song this morning? Amen. I appreciate Brother and Sister Torres very much. Amen. We're thankful for their dedication and commitment to the kingdom. Amen. And their ministry. Amen. Brother and Sister Torres, come sing ministry to us this morning. We love y'all very much. Amen. Amen.
of the praise today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. If you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to turn with me to Matthew. Matthew chapter number 22. Matthew chapter number 22. We're going to begin reading at verse number 36. Thank you, brother and sister Torres. Yeah. Amen. 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 I, I love, I might not have understood the words, but I understood the spirit. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I felt the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. Matthew chapter number 22. I'm going to begin reading at verse number 36 and 37. It says, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, right. and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Amen. I want to preach to you this morning on this thought, the greatest commandment, the greatest commandment. Lord Jesus, we thank you. God, for this day, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord, God, to be in your presence today. Lord, I ask God for you to anoint, God, your word, anoint my lips, God, as I speak. God, I'm going to help me, Lord, to say something that will help somebody today. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated this morning. David made a statement in the word of God. He said, my heart is fixed. And in Psalms 57 and 7, he says, My heart is fixed, O God. My heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. Amen. There are all kinds of heart conditions. There's, uh, there's a broken heart. There's a wounded heart. Uh, then there are physical heart conditions that limit and restrict one's abilities and one's activities. But David said, My heart is fixed. Oh God, my heart is fixed. Yeah. Amen. I, I want to talk about heart conditions today. Uh, in particular, I want to talk about one specific heart condition uh, that I've been feeling in my spirit. Uh, it, it's two words and it's whole heart. Uh, amen. I, I know there's a lot of ways a heart cannot be whole. I, I know there is a such thing as a broken heart. Uh, I've, I have known, uh, I've heard of people who have died from a broken heart. Amen. Uh, uh, a lot of times when someone has been married for 80 years or 60 years together and one dies, the other dies not that far long after that. And a lot of times it's due to a broken heart. They have lost their companion. And I know a broken heart can come from many different situations. I, I know that you can experience a broken heart through loss. Uh, it can come through divorce. It can, maybe a loss of a loved one, the death of a spouse. or It can be the absence of a father or mother in your life. Uh, I know that it happens to young and old. There's no age limit uh, on a broken heart. Amen. And I'm so glad that I know that there is one today who can heal the heart and make it whole. Amen. Amen. Psalms 147 and 3 says, He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. Luke chapter 4 and 18, uh, Jesus quoting a prophet says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. Jesus is a heart fixer. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He is the greatest surgeon in the universe. Yeah. He can perform open heart surgery and never leave a scar. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Amen. Amen, boy. I really felt like that the Lord was wanting me to talk about is that uh, he is grieved over a different heart condition in the church today. And it's a condition called a divided heart. Uh, amen. Uh, Half-heartedness. Who's ever heard that phrase before? Well, I would do it, but my heart's not in it. I'm half-hearted. 
Uh, and how much heart do you put into your prayer time? Yeah. How much heart do you put into your Bible reading and study? How much heart do you put into your worship? Amen. Yeah. It, the sad truth is that many cases our lives are lived uh, with less than a whole heart. Yeah. The truth is that God uh, and not only is not satisfied with less than our whole hearts, uh, he demands our whole hearts. Yeah. God does not settle for less than everything. He's not going to say, well, I, I know your heart is in this world, but if you just give me a little piece of your time, I'd be happy with that. So that means that uh, to give God less than our whole hearts means that our heart is divided. Yeah. It means that we're holding out on God, which means that we are reserving something for ourselves that is not actually ours. Right. Mm -hmm. Which in the essence is that we're robbing God. To give God less than a whole heart means that the part that you don't give him is open for business to anyone. In other words, the part of your heart that you have not yielded and surrendered to God is not filled with God and can be occupied by other things, which means that that part of your heart that is not filled with God and surrendered to God is not protected by God. You see, God only protects what is His. He can only govern what is put in His control. See, the Bible gives several references to serving God with a whole heart in 2 Chronicles chapter 15 and verse 15. It says, And all Judah rejoiced at the oath, for they had sworn with all their heart, and Sodom with their whole desire. And he, and he was found of them, and the Lord gave them rest round about. Psalms 9 and 1, I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all thy marvelous works. Yeah. Psalms 119 and 10. With my whole heart I have sought thee. Yeah. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Right. Psalms 119 and 34. Uh, give me understanding and I shall keep thy law. Yea, I shall ob observe it with my whole heart. Yeah. Psalms 119 and 69. It says the proud have forged a lie against me. But I will keep thy precepts with my whole heart. Mm -hmm. David understood something about giving God your whole heart. Mm -hmm. yeah. Seeking the Lord with everything that's in you. Yeah. Amen. Don't, don't hold. It's not worth it to hold anything back. Yeah. But you see this condition, this heart condition that we're talking about this morning, a divided heart. See, there's some scripture that talks about that as well in Jeremiah 3 and 10. It says, yet for all this... Her treacherous sister, Judah, hath not turned unto me with her whole heart, but feignly, in other words, pretended, and just acted like, and like almost, uh, almost giving everything to the Lord, but Judah wouldn't give it all, saith the Lord. Yeah. In 1 Kings 11 and 4, it says, For it came to pass when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord as God as it was, as was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Zidonians. And after Melchum, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and went not fully yeah. after the Lord as did his father. Right. <coughs> Finally, this one really clarifies it in 2 Chronicles chapter 25 and 2. Speaking of Amaziah, it says, And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not per not with a perfect heart. Mm -hmm. You look at that word perfect, it means whole. Yeah. It means whole. Yeah. I believe that this speaks to a lot of the churches nowadays. Yeah. They're doing the right thing. They're coming to church. They're giving. They're, uh, they're giving them their time. They're giving them their resources. Giving them their finances. But they're holding their heart back. Amen. They're, they're, they're coming, they're doing the right thing, but they're not serving the Lord with their whole heart. Yeah. 
And then God desires your whole heart today. He does. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Yes, he does. Jesus said that there's going to be some that come in that day and that are going to say, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Yeah. Have we not, uh, you know, healed the sick? Have we not cast out devils? Have we not done all these great and marvelous works? Yeah. And he's going to tell them, he's going to tell them, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Yeah. I never knew you. Right, right. What was he saying? Oh, you did the right things, but your heart wasn't in it. Yeah. You didn't have a relationship with me. Mm -hmm. you, you didn't serve me. You didn't love me with your whole heart. You, had, you, you left part of your heart open to other things, to other gods, to, to the world, to your flesh, mm -hmm. to the other Things that try to take over your heart and your life. Right. Here with Israel and with Solomon and Amaziah, we see a condition that is very dangerous. Right. It's a divided heart. See, when we speak of the heart here, we're speaking of what you love. The affection, the intention, your desire, your passion. Yeah. We're speaking of what you are invested in. What you're committed to. Yes. Amen. I'll do it, but my heart's not in it means I'll perform the function. I'll carry out the duty, but I'm not invested. I'm not committed. You see, God, he, he provided an object lesson for a prophet by the name of Hosea. In Hosea 1 and 2, the beginning of of the word of the Lord by Hosea, the Lord said to Hosea, Go take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms, for the land hath committed great whoredom and departing from the Lord. So Hosea said, You go, you go out on that street corner and, and, and you find one of those ladies of the night and you marry her. You bring her home and you marry her. Because this is a this is a type and a lesson that I'm trying to teach. That Israel has has went away from me. They have they have run off with another lover. They have ran off with someone else, uh, with serving other gods, and they're, they're not serving me with their whole heart. They're not pursuing after me, but they've got other desires. And, and he told Hosea, he said, "You go and you marry this woman." And the whole book of Hosea, you read about God trying to correct the children of Israel in verse five. Uh, chapter 9 verse 1 it says rejoice not O Israel for joy as other people for thou hast gone a whoring from thy God mm -hmm. thou hast loved a reward upon thy co uh, every corn floor the floor and the wine press shall not feed them and the new wine shall fell in her they shall not dwell in the Lord's land but Ephraim shall return to Egypt what is Egypt it's bondage each Ephraim's going to go back into bondage. Yeah. They shall eat the unclean things in Assyria. They shall not offer wine offerings to the Lord, neither shall they be pleasing unto him. Their sacrifices shall be unto them as the bread of mourners. All that eat thereof shall be polluted, for their bread, for their soul shall not come into the house of the Lord. Amen. This is a serious problem that Israel is contending with. The serious problem that they have. They're not serving the Lord with their whole heart. They are going after other gods. They're going after other things. Amen. There, there is no other gospel than the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. There is no other belief system outside of the belief of Jesus Christ and Him only. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Amen. There's no other alternative route. Amen. Any other route, you're a thief and a robber. Amen. Any other route, you're breaking in. You're coming in where you're not where, where you're not allowed, where you're not permitted. You've got to go through the door. Amen. 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 Jesus is the way. Yeah, is. Hosea chapter 10 and 1. Amen. God continues on. He says, Israel is an empty vine. He bringeth forth fruit unto himself. According to the multitude of his fruit, he hath increased the altars. According to the goodness of his land, they have made goodly images. Look at what he says in verse 2, Hosea 10 and verse 2. It says, their heart is divided. 
Now they shall be found faulty. Amen. They shall, he shall break down their altars. He shall spoil their images. So, and now they shall say, we have no king because we feared not the Lord. What then shall a king do to us? They have spoken words, uh, swearing falsely and making a covenant. This judgment springeth up as hemlock, as poison in the furrows of the field. Amen. Amen. Whenever we, you don't serve the Lord with your whole heart, God allows things to come into your life. Uh, amen. To try and bring you to a point where you turn to him uh, and you surrender completely to him. Amen. He's not, we were talking about in hyphen class today, we were talking about understanding and knowing the adversary. You've got to know your adversary. Amen. If you want victory in your life, you've got to understand uh, how he comes at you uh, so that you can recognize his tactics uh, and you can recognize, you're not deceived by his wiles. Amen. Sometimes God allows the adversary to come against you. Amen. Because, because he's trying to redirect you. He's trying to get you to turn around. Amen. Get your focus back on me. Turn around. Don't, don't go after the, the gods of this world. Don't go after the things of this life. All that stuff is going to pass away. But seek after God. Seek after the word of God. Because heaven and earth is going to pass away. But he said, my word shall not pass away. See, many people in the church are just like that. They're physically present. May even give an offering and sometimes pay tithes. But they're not invested from the heart. Their affection, their passion, and their desire is absent from their actions. Amen. Amen. Jesus said where your affections is, that's where your heart's going to be. Amen. You see, Amaziah, Amaziah did it right, but not with a perfect heart. He didn't do it with his whole heart. Amen. You see, just like Israel played the part of a prostitute by turning away from the Lord and turning unto other gods, this is a serious problem in the 21st century church. We see many people serving God half-heartedly. Amen. To serve God half-heartedly is uh, no different than a prostitute. What do you mean? A, a prostitute performs a service. Yeah. They go through the same physical motions as a wife, uh, but they're not invested in the activity. They are emotionally detached from the person that they're interacting with. Uh, and before the day is out or the night is over, they may have been with four or five or more uh, uh, repeat experiences with other people. Uh, Friends, Jesus does not want a prostitute church. Oh. He wants a bride. Amen. Amen. He's not marrying a prostitute church. Amen. That's only going through the motions. But their heart is not in it. He wants your heart. He wants you to serve him with all your heart. He doesn't want you to just come to church and go through motions. But he wants you to give him everything that you have. God wants a bride. Yeah. He's marrying a bride. He's coming back for a bride that loves him with her whole heart. Amen. 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 See, you cannot be passionate and emotionally and financially invested in the work of God. If you don't have any excitement about coming here and worshiping God. Amen. Brother, brother, Sister Torres, they're some of the most excited people I know. Boy, he, he lifts my spirit every time I see him. And both of them, they're both great people. But man, he's got a fire inside of him. Yes. Amen. I, I, when I was up here, we were singing. I was thinking, I was like, the, the, I felt the Lord quicken me. You ought to ask them to come and sing. Amen. Because I know Brother Torres and Sister Torres, they're going to sing with all their heart. They're going to worship God with all their heart. Amen. It was a little objectless. If you didn't understand the words, understand the object lesson that God was trying to show you that when you worship, you need to do it with everything you got. You need to lift him up because he's worthy. You need to do it with your whole heart. Amen. Not concerned about what people think about you, uh, but your focus is worshiping him. Uh, 
living for him, exalting him, because he is worthy. Amen. 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 You need to have some excitement about coming to church and worshiping God. Amen. Amen. If you don't have any passion and any fire and any appetite for the preach word of God, you need to check your heart meter. Because your attention, your heart might be divided. Right, yeah. There might be some other things that are sight, that are leeches, and they're siphoning off your desire, yeah, siphoning off your excitement, siphoning off those, you know, that that drive and that passion that you used to have for living for the Lord. Amen. There's other things that are filling those spots in your life. Amen. God is wanting to bring to your attention today that he's not coming back after a divided heart. Those that enter in, those that, whom he says, well done, that good and faithful servant, are those that have loved him and served him with their whole hearts. Yeah. Yeah. You see, if you're really going to serve God, you must do it with your whole heart. Yeah. Amen. I'm going to tell you the truth this morning. Amen. If I was coming in here or any other church and there was no fire, no presence of God, no power, no anointing, if this was just a gathering, yeah. amen, I might come to just to fellowship with you. Amen. But, but I wouldn't be coming here to get anything from the Lord. Amen. If there was no fire, no, no, no power being released in this place. Amen. But, but this church does seek after the Lord. We do seek after. We do desire his presence. We do desire his power. I want to see him work in your life. Amen. But, but he, will, he will limit himself by your restrictions. Right. Yeah. You see, God can do anything. He can do anything in your life that he wants to do. Yeah, he can. But he limits himself to your restrictions. You say, God, I don't want you going in there. He's not going to force his way in. He says, I'm standing at the door and I'm knocking. If you want me to come in, you, you've got to open the door. Yeah. Amen. You want to give me your whole heart, I'm not going to take it from you. You've got to surrender it to me. Yeah. You've got to give it to me. Yeah. I'm not going to force myself upon you. I'm not going to force you to give me anything. But I'm going I'm to love you. And I'm going to be there for you. And I'm going to try to help you to get to a point to where you say, God, I'm not my own anymore. God, I want to give you everything. I want to surrender my life to you. God, I want to surrender my whole heart to you, Lord. I don't want to, I don't want to, Lord, hang on to anything. I want to give it all to you. See, I don't want to know how to tread water and just stay afloat. I want to fly. I want to go somewhere. I don't want to be like a, you know, movement doesn't mean progress. Amen. Any hit bellies at the place today, you ever got your truck stuck in the mud? That tire's just a moving, but you're not going anywhere. Amen. You're stuck in a rut. Amen. You're slinging mud. But that's all that's happening. Amen. I don't want to just have movement, but I want progress. I want to move forward. I don't want to be just stuck in a rut, but I want to give God my whole heart and say, God, take me where you want me. I want to follow you with my whole heart. Amen. Amen. I want to serve you with my whole heart. Amen. I'm not looking for a place that makes me comfortable. I'm looking for a place where the anointing of God is flowing. Yeah. I want to be in an atmosphere that kindles the fire in my soul. Amen. Yeah. We have that atmosphere here at church. Amen. But I want it every day in my life. I, I want to have that fire burning in my soul. Amen. <coughs> yes, Amen. Amen. For some of us, Man, we better hope God doesn't come on a weekday because we're running by the low on the Holy Ghost. You need to be full of the Holy Ghost every day. Amen. Don't be caught unawares. 
And you know me, God, I'm, don't say, well, I'm going to give God my whole heart on Sunday, but on Monday I'm going to take back a little bit and I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to act my own way. I'm going to, I'm going to treat people the way I want them. I want to treat them. I'm not going to think about how God wants me to treat them. I'm going to do my own thing my own way. Yeah. Amen. Better hope God doesn't come back that day yeah. Amen. because you'll be left behind. Every day we've got to give the Lord our whole hearts. We've got to serve him with our whole hearts. Amen. Uh, Jesus said the greatest commandment is, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul and all your mind. In other words, that's your whole being. You love the Lord with everything. Amen. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is moving in mighty ways. The Word of the Lord is going forth. Yes. You need to invest your whole heart into the kingdom. Yes. Amen. Who wants God to love them and act towards them half-heartedly? Anybody here want God to love you half-heartedly? Anybody want God to respond to you half-heartedly? Amen. Just uh, Brother Cajun wants that. Amen. Or, 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 or do you want God's full attention? You want God's full commitment to your well-being. Uh, you want God's... You, you, God doesn't want to be an afterthought in your life. Right. He doesn't want to be an afterthought. Yeah. We, don't want him, we don't want to be an afterthought in his mind. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. How would that feel? Yeah. Going through life. And God says, oh, oh <laughs> I forgot about you. <laughs> oh, you're going through this? I, I didn't even realize that. I wouldn't want that. Yeah. I want the attention of the Lord upon me. Yeah. And guess what? He desires the same from us. Yes. He wants our full attention. He wants our full heart. Yeah. Our whole heart. That's right. I believe. You see, God is looking for people that are hungry for him. Yes. People that are hungry for his word. People that are passionately pursuing his presence. Yeah. That's what he's wanting to create here. He's wanting to create some passion, some fire, some zeal, some intensity, some heart hunger, some desire. Yeah. See, these are the things that mark the lives of those who are serving God with their whole heart. Right. In John 2 and 17 says, The zeal of thine, thy house have eaten me up. Ecclesiastes 9 and 10 says, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with all thy might. In other words, it's speaking about the whole heart. Yeah. My friend, I want you to know that in the hour that we are living in, you're not going to make it with half-hearted service. Right. It might get the guilt off of you a little bit, just coming to church, sin, going through motions. You know, you might, well, I did a good thing. That is a good thing. Yeah. But, you're, but you're like, you're acting like Amaziah. You did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but you didn't serve him with a perfect heart. With a whole heart. That's what that word perfect meant. Yeah. With a whole heart. See, God's not going to accept our offering without our hearts. God's not looking for people who know how to do the right thing, the church thing. He's looking for people who know how. He's not looking for people who know how to do church, but he's looking for people to be the church. Amen. A church that is in love with Jesus. A bride that is in love with Jesus. A church whose heart is on fire for the things of God. Can we stand this morning? Thank you, Lord. Jesus said the greatest commitment of all yes. is to love the Lord thy God yeah. with all of your heart. Oh, with all of your soul and with all of your mind. Yeah. I, every part of your being, God is saying, I want you to love me. Yeah. That's what I'm seeking for. Yeah. I'm seeking for love. Yeah. God is looking for love. He's not looking just for actions. Yeah. And and his his little object lesson with, with Hosea told us very clearly that he's he's not coming back for a prostitute church. Yeah. 
He's not come back for a prostitute people that are that are living their lives after the world and that are that are worshiping other gods and going in the direct in the, in the direction of sin and evil. He's not coming back for people yeah. like that. Yeah. But he's going to come back for a people that have made themselves ready. That's right. That's right. Amen. A people that love him with their whole heart. Amen. Amen. Do you want to love the Lord today? Amen. Amen. Let's spend a few moments. Amen. Let's just bow our heads where you're at, or if you come pray. But let's talk to the Lord. If, <coughs> if there's been some areas of your life that you've been holding back from the Lord, amen, this is your moment. This is your moment in time that you can say, God, I don't want to do that anymore, but Lord, I want to serve you with my whole heart. I want to give you everything, Lord. I want to, I want to fulfill that greatest commandment of all. God, I want to love you with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind. God, every part of my being, God, I desire you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, I love you today. I love you today. God, I want to serve you with my whole heart. Hallelujah. Let's spend a few moments in prayer this morning. Amen. Talk to the Lord. The Lord loves you. He's not here to beat you up. He's not here to tear you down. He, he wants to reconcile you to him. He wants to build a relationship with you. Amen. He wants you to serve him today in love with your whole heart. Hallelujah. Let's talk to the Lord for a little bit today. Jesus.
birthday or the day. Hey. That's the story. Hey. You're dismissed in the fear of the Lord. God bless you this morning. Wait for it.